ladies and gentlemen, are you wanting to install Windows 11 on your PC? Maybe you've done what I've just done, which is to build a brand new gaming PC and you want to get ready. Or maybe you've got a laptop that you've upgraded the drive in. Or maybe things just aren't working properly on your Windows machine and you want to do a full reset to make sure everything is nice and fresh. So if you follow this video to the T, to the letter, you observe my tips and tricks, I assure you it should go as smoothly as it possibly can. So allow me to walk you through the full process and to make you as comfortable as possible right after a short word from this video's sponsor. MSI's RTX 4080 Gaming X Trio is here, and it's the perfect graphics card for maxed out PC gaming. With best-in-class performance and next-gen ray tracing, support for NVIDIA's DLSS 3.5 technology, and crazy high frame rates in your favorite titles, why not make the upgrade today? Learn more about the RTX 4080 Gaming X Trio with the link down below. Okay then, first things first, you're gonna need three things really to make this work. The first one being a machine with an SSD in it. It doesn't have to be new, we'll show you how to wipe this. It is actually very straightforward if you have an existing partition or you've got an old version of Windows on it. But obviously be aware, once you have wiped this, that data is gone. So do make sure you back everything up if you are coming from an existing machine because it's not a mistake you want to make. You will also need a drive, ideally USB 3. Make it as fast as you can, but don't go spending stupid amounts of money on this because you're probably only going to need it once and then it will live in a drawer. This is what we're going to use to actually install Windows on, which is then used to install Windows onto your machine. If you don't have one of these, then you'll have to get a USB bootable drive that you can buy from retail, but that doesn't really make much sense these days. And then thirdly and finally, and perhaps the most annoying of all, you will actually need an existing machine that has Windows on it in order to get this installed, which is why I say you can go and buy one of those USB drives ready to go if you don't have this but I mean, it's Windows. I even if you don't have an existing machine, chances are you know someone that has Windows that could just do this for you. It's very straightforward. You wanna go over to the Windows website. You don't actually need to pay for anything at this stage, which is pretty cool. You don't need a license key. You don't need nothing. Just access to the Windows website here. And then if you're wanting to upgrade without doing the process from scratch, you want this Windows 11 installation assistant. But today, and probably the thing you're going to want, is where it says create Windows 11 installation media. And this has to run on a Windows machine, which is why it's running on a Windows machine. Just download that. It is a tiny little file. Click OK, and then let this start. It will then do a few things, get it ready, but it will ask you to get your drive and place this in. And there aren't really any restrictions other than the fact that it will need to be formatable in FAT32, I believe. And it says you need a minimum of eight gigabytes of storage space. So it's actually pretty lightweight because it will be quite packed on here. And then when it gets installed on your new machine, it'll unpack it and it'll take up typically nearer the 16 gigabyte mark. But obviously the requirements of Windows are actually changing all of the time. So I wouldn't necessarily worry too much about that because most drives are probably gonna be at least 32 gig. You then be greeted with this screen that will say select the language in addition. Chances are you'll be keeping all of these the same, English United Kingdom versus United States, or obviously maybe you speak French and that's what you want. Obviously this is where you set that up. There's only one edition of Windows 11 here, and I think this is because it will install all of them anyway. So if you wanna choose Windows 11 Pro or Home, both of them will be on this USB flash drive, so you can choose when you actually come to install it. So we'll click Next. And then here it will say which media do you want. ISO file is maybe if you've got like a mate or something and you've got a Mac and he hands you this ISO file, you can then put that on a drive. But most people are gonna to wanna to select USB flash drive. Um, we can't find a USB flash drive. Oh, that's because I've put it in the wrong computer. That's me being silly. Yes, there we go, hit refresh, next and it will wipe everything on your drive. So if there's anything important there, do make sure that you get rid of it. And then it's gonna start creating our Windows 11 media. Just let it do its thing. While we're waiting for this to complete, by the way, I will also draw your attention to the differences between all of the different versions. Windows 11 Pro versus Home, I mean, they're not really advertising many differences here for the end user, mainly because Pro actually does mean Pro. It's not like one of these, I don't know iPhone Pros that, let's be honest, are still for mainstream people. Pro is actually for use in a professional environment, so things like having all of these different groups and you can install and then make changes on loads of different machines all at the same time. You can have BitLocker support. All of these things are almost guaranteed to be not essential for you. And when it comes to actually buying your copy of Windows, I wouldn't buy Pro unless you specifically need it. But chances are, if you're watching this video, then you probably don't need Pro. So I would stick with Home. But then the other question you might have is whether to go for Windows 10 or 11. And you do have this little comparison here that does show you a few of the changes, but fundamentally the main one really for me that I really like is that you get much, much better HDR support 
on Windows 11. You can turn on Auto HDR as well that supports games and things that don't actually have native HDR support. But just generally speaking, Windows 11 has been great pretty much from around about six months after release up until now. So I would highly advise you do choose Windows 11. The only caveat to this is obviously check the minimum specifications because if your PC doesn't support firmware TPM, which is a motherboard setting, we'll show you that a little bit later, or maybe you're running quite an older CPU, then it might not actually be supported. So obviously always make sure your system meets the minimum requirements before installing. 99%, come on, come on. Yes, your USB flash drive is ready. So if we go Windows and E, open up the Explorer, we should find ESD USB ready to go. And at this stage, we're completely done with this PC, the one that's invisible that you can't see under the desk, and we're ready to turn this one on. So let's grab our USB flash drive out of the back, and we'll insert this into any USB port, ideally one of the faster USB 3 ones onto our system. We will then turn it on. I love this system, by the way. This is one that I've been tweaking over the years. If you do want to see the full build guide of this, by the way, you can find it in the top right corner of your screen. But I will also say that for an upcoming video, we're going to be testing Gen 5 PCI SSD speeds. Whether that matters for gaming, get subscribed if you're not already so you don't miss that. But this is otherwise a completely blank drive. It's got nothing on it straight out of the box and it is in our system here. And because system hardware is pretty clever, you'll notice that it doesn't actually go into the BIOS. It goes straight into the Windows install and it is really straightforward. As I say, this is why I don't tend to go into too much detail normally, because it is very simple. This is why it was important to choose the right language, because the only one we have is the one we selected earlier. You can change your keyboard and time and stuff like you'd expect, but fundamentally you just want to go next, really. Uh, where it says repair your computer down here, this is why it's quite important actually to hang on to this USB flash drive if you can, because if you ever do have any problems or anything, then repair your computer usually does quite a good job of making sure you install or can boot I should say into Windows. I will say that one of my good tips actually is to make sure you only have one drive in your system when you are actually installing Windows because what I've had happen before on several systems which is pretty annoying is that if you have multiple drives in there sometimes it can install what we call the BCD or the bootloader on one drive and then actually puts your Windows files on the other which means that if one of your drives isn't in your system or one of them goes corrupt then you still can't get into Windows which is pretty annoying so just make sure you only install one in drive, I can't speak again today, make sure you install only one drive at a time and then add the rest once you're all set up. Now this is the screen that I think will upset or scare a lot of people where it says activate Windows and this is like oh god I haven't bought my copy yet I, I can't get in. This actually isn't true because there's this little button down here that says I don't have a product key just hit this and you'll have to enter one later. We'll talk to you about Windows activation and keys and stuff once we get in there, but this is where we can choose the different versions. And if you do already have a key, I don't think it would get you to this screen because the Windows version is obviously tied to the key. So most people are gonna to wanna to go to Windows 11 Home. We'll hit Next. And unfortunately with Windows 11, you do need to be connected to the internet to actually install Windows, which is pretty annoying. Here it will tell you what type of installation do you want. Do you wanna upgrade Windows or do you want to do a fresh install basically? Upgrade if you already have one, fantastic if you're coming from like Windows 10. But here we wanna to go to Customized, and then here you'll see where we have drive zero unallocated space. And if you do already have a drive and you want to start again, then you'll have a few different partitions here. I mean, if I say new, hit apply, say okay, you'll then see that we have these different partitions. So where it says drive zero, that essentially means drive one. I know it's a bit confusing. Zero in array is actually the first one in the array, but don't worry about that, it's getting a bit too technical. And it creates three different partitions on that drive. So if you have multiple drives, then be careful because it will get a bit confusing. It will say like drive one, partition one, drive zero, partition three. And yeah, you, you wanna pay attention to the drive number really rather than the partition. But if you are going to delete your existing installation and you only have one drive, then you would just hit delete on this, hit delete on this, hit delete on this. And then once again, you'll be back at drive zero unallocated space. But as I say, do this very carefully because it's very easy to wipe a whole drive without you realizing essentially. But once again, we'll go to new. We'll have all of our partitions set up for us. 
Then we can just hit next, and this is the bit that really doesn't take very long at all. It will copy the files from your USB flash drive onto your SSD. And if you've got a really fast flash drive, this literally takes seconds. I mean, it's taking a little bit longer because this is quite an old drive, but it doesn't really matter, as I say, because you're only going to be doing this hopefully once. But it's just a case now of letting it do its thing, really. Your PC will restart several times. Don't be alarmed with this. If you do find that you get an error or maybe it boots into the BIOS or something like that, then you might need to go and change your disk order. So make sure it's actually booting into either the Windows install or the Windows drive. But as I say, it should do all of this for you. You get some ticks and it's just a case of waiting, really. If you've never actually been into the BIOS before, then welcome. This is not as scary as it looks, I promise. Don't worry about it too much. Uh, this is an Asus motherboard, but unhelpfully, they all look completely different and things are often called different things. But we've got this easy mode here that tries to show you things that are much more relevant to everybody. Find where it says boot priority, and then I've actually installed Windows due to the power of editing. And this is now located at the top here, but UEFI is our USB drive. So we'd wanna make sure that was at the top if we are having problems actually loading into our bootloader. But if you are having problems getting Windows installed and you know that your PC is compatible with Windows 11 and you can't understand what's going on, I would wager that your firmware TPM or TPM2 option is not enabled properly. This is very common on systems from three years ago or older. Basically anything before Windows 11, it was actually off by default, but newer motherboard BIOSes enable it by default. It's not the easiest thing to find. You want to go into the advanced mode. You'll probably be greeted with this main screen. Then we go over to advanced and we find where it says trusted computing. Asus do make it very easy now. And you can see that it says TPM2 device found and our security device support is enabled. If we turn this off, we wouldn't be able to install Windows and this is why a lot of people watching this will probably have problems. But this is gonna look completely different on different motherboards, different brands, but you're looking for something that, that says TPM basically and making sure that it is properly enabled. Then it should work. It's only been about three minutes, but yes, here we are. As I say, this little splash screen comes up. It's nice and neat actually. I prefer this one to the Windows 10. It's a lot more friendly, but here it will say, is this the right country or region? We say yes. Keyboard layout, yes. Do you want to add a second one? Probably no, you'll know if you do. This is the bit that potentially could be quite annoying where it says let's connect you to a network. Here my Wi-Fi networks have come up so it's gonna be quite easy. I just connect and type my password in. I will point out though that this is one of those times that is really quite frustrating where it hasn't actually picked up the fact that I've got an ethernet cable plugged into our machine. And I'm pretty confident that the reason for this is because while we do have drivers installed for a load of different network cards baked into the copy of Windows 11, it doesn't always pick it up if you've got a very specific network card. So this is like a high-end motherboard and it's not using like a standard one, shall we say, because most of the time it will work without issue. But this is one of those times where it almost needs to install a network adapter for the ethernet. And as long as your motherboard or your laptop or something has Wi-Fi, then chances are you're gonna be fine. But the same thing could happen with your Wi-Fi card if you've got something obscure, it needs a driver, but it doesn't actually have it on your machine. And you can get around this by using either like a command line thing to try and install Windows without an internet connection. Or there is also a way, I believe, to install the networking adapter driver with command lines and you can sort of get around this, install it, and then come back to it. it it's very frustrating and, you know, not everyone's gonna mention this, but look, here is my ethernet cable. It didn't actually show up. It's annoying. Maybe a restart of the PC could have fixed this as well but be aware, it's a possibility. The next step is to actually name our device and you can do something funny like Richard Head, but I wouldn't actually advise doing this because in this day and age, chances are you've got loads of devices and you don't wanna forget what is what. So I often just call it the name of the drive. So I data 970, but most people would say like, I don't know, Frank's gaming PC or Amelia's laptop or something like that. So when you see it online, you actually know what device it's talking about rather than just having a load of gibberish names. If you are called Richard Head, by the way, I am sorry. I shouldn't make fun. I mean, you've got a great name. I, I would happily be called Richard Head, but then Thea will have to change her name when we get married. 
Thea Head. <laughs> that doesn't sound good, does it? Sorry, by the way, if you're watching this and you are called Thea Head. This next screen might vary slightly depending on what version of Windows you're using. It will say unlock your Microsoft experience because I think the main difference really between Home and Pro for most people is that on Pro you don't actually need a Microsoft account or you didn't used to, maybe that's changed. Um, you could just use an old fashioned local account, but these days they want you to link it all together. So if you have one, sign in and then it will say, welcome back Marcus. And this is a brilliant opportunity to actually show you what I mean about all of your devices because I have so many. I have no idea what body bag PC was. That might be my water cooled rig. I don't know. But as you can see, there are quite a lot of devices here and having good names does help you to identify which one is which. So for example, 990 Pro Windows 11, that is my PC that has the uh, Samsung 990 Pro in it. But I have to say that I do love the fact that you can actually use a previous Windows 11 backup when you're setting up your new PC, because for a lot of people, you want everything as you left off. I mean, you know what, the iPhone backup system works flawlessly. And as long as this is similar to that, then great. I don't tend to do this because I'm always setting up as a new PC. So I'll set this up as a new PC down the bottom, but feel free to restore from a previous system if you are quite literally restoring from a previous system. Here you can create a pin, one, two, three, four, zero, 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 not advisable. Then you've got the splash screens that you probably do want to read. Do you want your PC to have its location tracked? Do you want Find My Device? Uh, diagnostic data to Microsoft. It's entirely up to you. Don't be pressured into saying yes or no. Do read them because not everyone wants all of these options on. I don't like them having my advertising ID, but again, it's entirely up to you. And then this is pretty neat as well. Customize your experience. What are you gonna use your PC for? And this is only gonna install the relevant apps that you're going to use. So if you say, I don't know, gaming, then it will install the Xbox app by default. Whereas if you've only selected development or business, then it won't actually do that. And it gives you a few different hints and tips and things that make it more relevant. I'm gonna say entertainment and gaming for this one, but it's entirely up to you and you can skip if you just want it to be as blank as possible. You can also link your phone as well. So if you wanna get your messages come through from your Android phone, then it is pretty straightforward. You would scan that. You can also do it for iPhone as well. So we're gonna skip that and then it will ask us if we wanna back up our files with OneDrive. I think five gig is the default. So I tend to say no, but probably for most people, you will wanna turn that on. Browser history and stuff. They're also gonna try and sell you Microsoft 365. I don't want this. Here we are, look, already get 100 gig more storage. No, I'm fine. And that appears to have been the last one. It's now just saying, don't turn off your PC. Wait for it to do, I don't know, like some updates and configuring and then you will be in the Windows desktop. The only other thing really that you need to be aware of is that not all of your drivers will be pre-installed. I mean, we saw what happened with our ethernet. The main one really that's gonna affect almost everyone watching this is gonna be your graphics card drivers. You won't be able to output at your full resolution and refresh rate, you won't wanna play games. So if you've got an AMD graphics card, you wanna go on the AMD website, download those drivers, Nvidia, obviously you wanna go to the Nvidia website. And because this is an Asus motherboard, it does actually want you to download their software. They will take care of all of your drivers for you, but I actually find this quite annoying. So again, I'm gonna say no, but please do be aware that all of your drivers will get installed from Windows if it can, but they're not always the most up-to-date ones. So if you're taking it seriously, especially with your graphics card, make sure you go download the latest drivers from the manufacturer's website. But other than that, you are pretty much done. There is just one more thing to do for a lot of people watching this because I can go and hit personalize. And it's not asking me to activate Windows because Windows 11 is now very clever. And if you've used your PC before and you're just swapping out the drive, so I've gone from this to my new Gen 5 drive, then it automatically has a log of what system you're using, what account it was on, and it will activate it for you. You don't need to mess about with product keys. But if you're setting this up for the first time and you haven't entered one in yet, then you will need to activate your device. Otherwise you'll have a little activation sticker that will pop up down here. You won't be able to change all of your settings. Annoyingly as well, you, I think you can get around it, but annoyingly if you've got like different sound devices, it won't let you change between them. Essentially, you can get a taste of Windows, but you won't be able to use it properly until you activate it. And I do want to talk about these like fake 
keys that some say are legitimate, some don't, that you can buy quite cheaply online. And the reason I never recommend them is because it's almost impossible to know where they've come from and how genuine they are. You pretty much got three things that can happen. You can buy a legitimate key from a legitimate source. You can buy a legitimate key from like a gray source. And this might not have the license or probably doesn't have the license to be sold as a retail key, which essentially means they've been bought in bulk and then they're selling them off and they probably shouldn't be doing that. But this is the point. We don't actually know because we don't know where the key comes from or obviously you could have an illegitimate key from an illegitimate source and without actually buying from a reputable site we don't know where the key has come from so you know if you want to do that you want to look and find a key from a windows key place and buy it cheaply and it works that's your prerogative but we can't explicitly recommend doing that here because we don't know where the keys come from it is a lot more expensive to buy it legitimately i think it's around about 90 pounds but hey you only need to buy it once so that's all we're going to say on the matter i really hope you've enjoyed this video though and it has been as simple if you are setting up your gaming pc to follow if it has smash the like button and get yourself subscribed if you have been wondering by the way what this beautiful mouse mat was this whole video it is my pc centric mouse mat that you can buy with the link down below at pccentric.store and of course as always if you are interested in current pricing on anything that was featured in this video like the monitor or this beautiful gaming pc you can find that link down below with my amazon affiliate links and while you're down there why not upgrade your graphics horsepower with msi the rtx 4080 gaming x trio packs a tri-frozer 3 thermal design torx fan 5 so quiet yet effective cooling dual bias support with gaming and silent modes and of course out of this world gaming performance Get yours today with the link down below. But thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.